Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews. Episode 45. Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. This book was creepy and vibrant and touching and exciting and an excellent sequel to The Shining and many more things. A few years ago, I never thought I would be reading books by this author. I grew up not watching PG-13 movies until I was actually 13, and I never watched any horror movies. I still don't. I'm a pretty cheerful, upbeat guy who doesn't like to dwell on gruesome, dark stuff. My favorite movies and books are more of the coming-of-age, sci-fi and fantasy adventure types. I guess you could say I'm not a horror fan. That was until I read King. Many times when I would talk to friends about the love of reading and my writing, they would ask, Have you read any of Stephen King's books? I would always respond by saying that I wasn't into horror. Then I read his great book called On Writing, where he gives a bio of his life and writes a lot about the craft of writing. So then, you guessed it, The Shining was the first King book I read. My friend let me borrow his beat-up paperback copy, but I ended up grabbing the audiobook from my public library. It was really good. I went on to read many more King books after that, finding he was a great writer, even if some of his books bored me in the middle sometimes. His novella The Body is possibly my favorite book of all time. I've read it several times in the last few years. The audiobook is narrated by the legendary Frank Muller, and it is amazing. This story is about an old guy dealing with alcoholism, ghosts, evil old people who travel the nation in RVs, and many other things. It's also about a little girl dealing with her special powers. I know, nothing new to a King novel, but he did a bang-up job writing this one, and it felt new and inventive and fresh and awesome. I'm not a drinker. I have a drink... About once every two months or so, a glass of red wine or a mixed drink at a family party, maybe a hard lemonade. I've never had more than one drink. I've never been drunk. It would seem there isn't much to relate to in this novel for me, but there is. It's really about seeing a character hit rock bottom and deal with picking up the pieces to eventually get to a place where they can help others. It's about a lot of other things, but that's one of the main ones. I've hit rock bottom a few times. It is just about always when one of my kids are sick. I've stayed overnight in the hospital with a sick child many more times than I'd like to remember. It's different than being at rock bottom from personal bad choices, but all this to say that this book, which would seem like a story I couldn't relate to, was touching to me, and I loved it. I may have blogged about this in the past, but I think Stephen King's main strength is that he writes great characters. I've read many of his books now, and there were a few that got boring in the middle. They were bloated with info dumps, flashbacks, backstory, and exposition, but I always kept reading. I kept reading because, in all of his books, I had become very invested in his characters, and I had to know what was going to happen to them. I cared about his characters. I think this strength Stephen has is why he is the king of fiction, so to speak. There are many other reasons. The dude can write some brilliant prose. But I think it's the characters we all come to love that push his books to the top of the charts and keep his stories in the minds of readers. I heard Mr. King asked by an interviewer that while his books are scary, there are also touching moments in them. King responded by saying that you can't be scared for a character unless you care about them. Stephen King writes characters you care about. 
he fleshes them out brilliantly. So, yes, great characters I became invested in have carried me through some of his books with bloated middles, but this book had no bloat. I loved every chapter. I never grew bored. There were some nice, slower chapters where you get to explore the different places in the story, but it never got boring. This book was a fantastic read, and if you liked The Shining, you'll love this great sequel, Dr. Sleep. All right. Well, that said, I have some great news for you, the listener of this podcast, Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews. You can get a free copy of Stephen King's Dr. Sleep just for trying Audible's service. If you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews, you can get Dr. Sleep, narrated by Will Patton of all people, man, he does a great job, for free just for trying audible.com. You get a free 30-day trial of their service and a free audiobook that you get to keep. You can get any audiobook of your choice, but I highly recommend Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. Will Patton is the narrator, and this guy just does an incredible job of telling the story. And when you're listening to the audiobook, it really seems like you're just like hanging out at a coffee shop or you're at the bar sitting across from Will Patton as he tells you his very personal and amazing story. I believe the main character's name is Danny. He's actually the kid of Jack from The Shining, all grown up. And he's the person who has The Shining. The first book is called The Shining, and The Shining is his power, I believe, to talk to dead people and to talk to ghosts. So now that he's an adult... There is a little girl in the story that he somehow gets communications from with his powers, and she's able to talk to him. Telekinesis? I can't remember, but check it out. It's not like he just wrote the sequel to The Shining to, like, make some money. He waited, like, decades until he had a story that he thought was awesome enough to tell. The story of that little boy from The Shining who's all grown up. So check it out, Dr. Sleep. If you haven't read The Shining yet, you should probably read that first. You could go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews and get The Shining for free instead. Then grab the paperback or the audiobook or the ebook for Dr. Sleep and check that out next. Either way, they're great books. I've been reading a lot of the books that Stephen King has been publishing in the last few recent years, and I have not been disappointed. They've all been fantastic, just like Joyland. That one was really good. Anyways, check out Stephen King, and let's get back to that review. Okay, so let's see. One of the reasons this book was so good was that the bad guys were just evil, and they were interesting. They're like a bunch of old people that are kind of like vampires that feed off of people's psychic powers and abilities. So they want to find this little girl so that they can like feed off of her powers. And they're just pure evil. And they travel around the world, these old people in these RVs. So they're like those nice old people that you see at McDonald's or something having a coffee. But little do you know that they are just like pure evil going after children to feed off of their powers. And the main character is this female character. and Man, she's creepy. She is an amazing antagonist. She's a great villain. So I've, I've kind of already said a lot of the stuff I loved about this book. But yeah, one of the main reasons it was great is because the villain was so good and so interesting. Not a normal villain that you would expect. An old lady, just who's pure evil, that travels around with a bunch of other super evil old people in RVs, traveling the world. So, really interesting, very different book. Not like anything else I've ever read, and just fantastic. I loved every chapter, like I said. It was definitely a page-turner. Stephen King never outlines his stories, and so 
Sometimes it kind of seems like you can tell because his stories kind of meander in the middle till he like finds the plot or something, but this one, it was just amazing and fantastic from page one till the end. So check it out. That's all I've got for you guys this week. Hope you guys are having a great summer, kicking it off with a bunch of reading. I'll talk to you next week. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at dandantheartman. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.